in this video, um, we're going to learn more properties of uh, Brownian motion. Um, so let's first recall uh, W of t for t is greater than or equal to zero, and this is our uh, standard Brownian motion. And we can define a more general version of the Brownian motion. Uh, for example, we can define x of t uh, as follows. Um, it's x of zero, which this is like an initial value, okay? Plus a mu is a constant times this time t, and then plus uh, a sigma times this uh, w of t, okay? And it's straightforward to verify that. Um, first of all, um, if we let uh, this x of 0 uh, equal 0, we can verify um, x of t, so for a time t, is nothing but uh, it follows the distribution of uh, mu t, and uh, because here we have a sigma, and the randomness comes from the standard Brownian motion, and it is uh, the variance becomes sigma square times t. The original the original uh, Brownian motion has a distribution of uh, uh, variance being t. Okay, and now um, we can verify. Um, for this, what is called, uh, we, we, we call this a drifted, so Brownian motion with a drift. And we can verify, satisfy uh, nearly all nice property of uh, Brownian motion. For example, uh, we have uh, independent and stationary increment. And more importantly, um, we still have a continuous path. Okay. And uh, um, and now the uh, next topic of um, today's class is uh, we we'll learn something called a Brownian bridge. Okay. Um, the question to ask is uh, pretty straightforward. This is time and this is our W of t. So given, uh, given some time s, let's say uh, our Brownian motion may be here and we'll ask the questions is uh, for a t that's before this s, what is the distribution, conditional distribution of this w of t um, given this w of s? So we can have something like this, okay? And we can have something like this. But uh, uh, the key is um, this thing is given. And why it's called a Brownian motion, a Brownian bridge, is because it's as if we build a bridge between uh, this point right here and the starting point, which is uh, zero. Okay. And now, um, but before we analyze that, uh, we have to first de uh, define several things. Um, the first one is uh, uh, multivariate. We have to define multivariate um, normal distribution. Okay. First, we have uh, z1, z2, up to zn uh, being iid, identically distributed and independent. Um, standard normal random variable. Okay. Then um, we can have x1 which is a11 times Z, z1 plus 
a12 times z2 plus tail a1n times zn plus a mu1. And by the way, um, the small case letter in these expressions are all non-random, only capitalized letter, so random variables. And we can have x2, uh, same thing, so uh, 2, 1, z1, dot, 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 plus uh, till 2n and zn plus mu2, and dot, 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 and we can have x sub m. And this m may not be the same as n, is uh, m1, z1, plus till a mn zn plus mu m this this is nothing but a, a linear combination so linear combination of uh, all these uh, zi i from 1 to n uh, with uh, some uh, it's almost like a drift but let's uh, call it a bias okay with something like mu vector, which is uh, uh, which is like mu i, i from 1 to uh, m. And then this x i, i from uh, 1 to m is called, actually is uh, uh, follows, let's say this. Uh, follows multi, uh, this is called multivariate normal distribution. Okay, um, the multivariate normal distribution is kind of different from, let's say, uh, two different normal distribution because. Uh, Normal uh, multivariate normal distribution satisfy a nice property. Um, so here I'll, I'll state this claim without proof. For um, for the proof, you guys can refer to the one thirty B textbook. Um, uh, section uh, seven point eight about uh, this multivariate normal distribution. Um, we normally we, we know that um, the covariance being zero does not imply the two random variables are independent. Okay, um, so for these uh, x, let's say i from i to m. Okay, we know that uh, independence. Of course, implies uh, covariance of x i x j for different uh, i j being zero. Okay. Um, so x i x j independent, and the reverse, which is this direction, is not true for like say arbitrary random variables. However. But for these multivariate normal uh, distribution, this is a very nice property that uh, this is even only if that is uh, uh, the covariance being zero is the equivalent of xi xj being independent for multivariate uh, normal distribution. All right, and now knowing this, we can further define. What is called a Gaussian process. Um, a Gaussian process is uh, simply as follow: it is uh, x of t, which is a stochastic process. All right, and if uh, for let's say t1, uh, t2, and t3, dot 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 tn. And we have x t one, x t two, till x sub t n. If they are multivariate normal distribution, so if they follow a multivariate normal distribution, uh, 
uh, then we say um, then we say it's uh, um, say x of t is uh, is a Gaussian stochastic process. And how do we uh, then to verify uh, the Brownian motion is a uh, Gaussian is uh, pretty straightforward. So we verify uh, the standard Brownian motion. Is Gaussian. Uh, this is pretty simple. It's because we know that uh, W of T1, which is uh, um, satisfy the distribution of N0 uh, T1, okay, with variance T1. And uh, now we see W of T2, okay minus W of T1 because of the memoryless property or say um, this independent and stationary increment this is a normal random variable with, uh, with mean 0 and variance uh, um, T2 subtract T1 so we can see this one is nothing but uh, square root of T1 times Z1 where Z1 is uh, um, n01 okay this one is a square root of a t2 minus t1 z2 and z2 is some n01 standard normal uh, random variable and we can continue this uh, construction we can have t sub n subtract t sub n minus 1 is nothing but uh, t sub n sub uh, subtract t sub n minus 1 and this is the same um, it's it it's the same in distribution with uh, t sub n subtract t sub n minus 1 times z sub uh, let's say uh, n okay and for z n is uh, a standard normal random variable and moreover these z1 z2 z n they are independent because of the independent increment of Brownian motion okay and now we can see that um, the W T1 till W T n is nothing but a linear combination. It's a linear combination of all these uh, increments. Okay, it's like an upper triangular uh, linear system. So is whoops is a linear combination. Uh, for all these uh, increment, which is uh, which is uh, square root of a t1 z1 and square root of a t2 minus uh, t1 uh, z2 and up till tn subtract tn minus one zn. Okay, so uh, it's a Gaussian process, which means uh, for Brownian motion, um, if uh, um, we can construct something uh, that's like a Brownian motion, then we can use the covariance being zero to verify the independence of a two random variable built from the same Brownian motion. And now let's uh, uh, let's do it. So and let's ask the question of the following. Let's ask the question of uh, the question we at, we want to ask uh, uh, here, that is, uh, given W of s, what is uh, the conditional, let's say, uh, expe expectation of a W of t for some time t before this s? This is W of t given W of s, and what is this? And first, let's verify the following thing. Okay. Let's verify the following thing. And uh, um, we, we can have what is called a Brownian bridge, uh, this uh, stochastic process. And it's defined by W of t subtract t divided by s w of s. Okay. Um, we can verify this is independent of uh, W of S. 
And now we simply verify uh, the following thing, uh, that is uh, um, the covariance of W of T, sub subtract T over S, W of S, and W of S is zero. We simply want to verify that. And, uh, um, and to do this, we first we use uh, the definition of covariance. It's a uh, covariance of uh, two random variables can be computed by uh, the expectation of the product times the product of the expectations. Okay, so as a result, uh, we can have this is nothing but the expectation of uh, the first one, the Brownian bridge stochastic process times the second one. subtract um, the product of the, the expectation. But if we look at these uh, two uh, stochastic process, the pr uh, because if we take expectation separately without any condition, then they are zero. Because, uh, uh, by the way, uh, I want to emphasize t divided by s is a deterministic. It's not random. It's like a coefficient. So as a result, this is the same thing as the expectation of w of t times w of s subtract t divided by s expectation of w s times w s okay and in earlier class we derived the expectation of uh, w t w of t times w of s this is nothing but the minimum of uh, s and t okay subtract t divided by s and similarly we can simply let uh, s uh, equals and this is nothing but, uh, by the way, uh, we can let s equals t here, or we can simply uh, acknowledge that this is nothing but the variance of ws. So it's, uh, it's s, okay? And for the first one, because uh, we set our uh, time, t is less than or equal to s, so the first one is t, and this is t minus t is 0. So as a result, um, we verify that uh, the covariance is zero. As a result, uh, we have this is independent of this. Okay. And now uh, we're almost ready. So as a result, um, let's consider the following identity. That is, uh, we know that the expectation of w of t subtract t divided by s um, of w of s is zero. Okay. Uh, this is simply by uh, the property of uh, these two random variables are both having mean zero, and the multiply with the coefficient doesn't change that. Okay. So now, by the previous claim. This random variable right here, which is a Brownian bridge, is independent of WS. So we can add WS as a conditional distribution. So by proposition, by the pre uh, previous proposition, because the independent, we can add W of S as a condition. Now we simplify the linearity of uh, of the expected uh, value, say expectation, we can have, this is nothing but uh, um, this formula. But now let's look at, uh, this is the conditional expectation of given ws, w is given, w of s is given, and we try to compute the expectation of that. Then, because this is given, okay, so this is a non-random thing. This actually equals uh, W of S, okay. So if W of S equals some, let's say A, then this expectation is just A, okay. So as a result, this is W of S. Now we have reached our formula. We simply 
move this part to the left of this equation we have um, this one um, is nothing but t divided by s w of s I mean this is a this is a so nice result uh, if we look back uh, previously um, at this graph okay um, if ws uh, is given then at wt it is as if we connect uh, these two lines and because the coefficient is t divided by s um, the expectation is right here all right so um, this is a very nice property of Brownian motion.